All right, in today's lesson, we're going to take a look at how you can combine a series of images uh, into one larger image using the tools of Photoshop, the uh, photo merge tools. And you've probably seen these images from time to time on the internet that uh, seem to be a more of a panorama or a horizontal scan. They're becoming more popular, uh, especially as a result of some of the new features that are available on some of the uh, devices that people have, where you can, for example, move your iPhone along a horizontal plane, uh, keeping your device uh, trigger set, and it will produce these lovely horizontal pans or panorama views. But you can also do that with other cameras as well. As you stand on a nice vista like this, take a series of shots and slightly move your camera from left to right as you take them and take five or six images and then you can bring these together in a, a little feature of Photoshop. And uh, at first glance when you see these images, you might think that somebody has just taken one image and cropped it down. For example, uh, here is one single image that uh, has been taken. And because we were standing far enough back or we were using a wide enough angle lens, we could produce the same panorama look by simply cropping a single image to give it that wide, expansive feel and look and then just crop that and then you have this uh, wonderful wide panorama view and it looks nice and everything however because it's being cropped from one single image it is a fairly low resolution uh, image if we were to take a look at the dimensions we would see that uh, well it has the width of a normal uh, high-res JPEG from a good DSLR camera the height is uh, still only 1600 pixels. And so if you were to go and print this, you could get a fairly nice print from it, but it wouldn't be anywhere near the resolution of uh, some of these other shots, for example. Let's take a look at the uh, resolution on this. We see that it is 15,000 by 5,300 pixels. And so if we wanted to uh, create a high-res image uh, maybe even a banner uh, using an image like this, we would get a lot better results. And so let's uh, see how we go about this. For those of you who might be new to this concept, let's take a look at this series of shots that I uh, did for one of these panoramas. Uh, here we are standing on a nice uh, plateau looking out over a rice field in North Vietnam and uh, beautiful scenery, beautiful mountains, and uh, rice fields that are just turning golden. And the idea is to take one shot, move the camera a little bit, take another shot, move the camera again, take another shot, and uh, you know, five or six shots will make a nice panorama stitch. Now, in an ideal world, of course, you would uh, maybe get the best results if you had your camera on a tripod and slightly turn the tripod, take another shot, turn the tripod again, take another shot. However, um, Photoshop is so good at matching things up and making adjustments in the background that you, even if you don't have your tripod with you, go ahead and try this uh, and you'll find that uh, you will get excellent results. All of the examples that we're going to show you in a minute were all done without a tripod. All right, so you get the idea and uh, then you, of course, bring them into a program like Lightroom process the raw image into JPEGs so that when we work with the images in Photoshop, we will be working with JPEGs rather than raw images. And if you don't have Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, don't worry, it's very easy to get into these days. It used to be quite an expensive investment that you had to make in order to purchase Photoshop and then pay extra even for Lightroom. But these days, uh, Adobe has made it very easy. You can get in for uh, I believe it's ten dollars a uh, month that you rent these programs. Both of these programs come together: Photoshop and uh, Lightroom together for nine ninety nine a month. Maybe just to give you a little idea of my workflow, uh, what I do is uh, find the uh, group of images in Lightroom and uh, 
check and make sure that uh, they're all fairly consistent as far as exposure goes. Ideally, you're shooting these uh, all in manual so that the exposure is going to be quite consistent. Uh, so you won't run into any problems like that. But if you have one that kind of stands out, maybe the sun was lighting that section a little stronger, you could make an adjustment uh, to that shot just a little bit so it matches up the others. So make all your adjustments uh, to the raw images before you export them. Let's just drop this down just a little bit so it matches up the others a little better. Okay, and then when you've identified your group, starts there, and we've got six shots. Then we'll export those using File, Export in Lightroom, making sure that you're exporting full res JPEGs. And if you need a little um, guidance on how to, to work with Lightroom, we do have a series of tutorials here online uh, to get you started on how to work with Lightroom. But export those to full resolution JPEGs into a specific folder so that they're real easy to find when you go to stitch them together in Photoshop. Let's go back to Photoshop and under File, go down to Automate. And the very last option there in your drop down menu is Photo Merge. Now, if you're working with an earlier version of Photoshop, that might have had a different name. I'm trying to remember, it might have been Photo Stitch or something like that. Click on Photo Merge if you're working with the latest version. And you do have uh, some options that you can experiment with here, but usually the auto works fine. So just keep the auto selected, at least as you're uh, first starting out working with this. And then uh, just hit the uh, Browse button and uh, search for the folder that you saved your series of images to. Nice one. Here's the six images and uh, just select them all and hit open and then hit OK and uh, Photoshop will analyze each of those images and see how best to stitch those together. And it usually does a very good job of analyzing everything and bringing everything together. And it usually does it pretty fast, especially if you don't have other software running in the background. And at uh, first glance, it does usually look something like this, where some of the detail has been lost in some of the uh, photographs as it has attempted to stitch it together. And you might even notice what looks like a little bit of cracking in between uh, some of the shots. If you look very closely, you might see kind of a white line. Don't worry about that. We'll be able to get rid of that, no problem. Okay, so once you've taking a glance at the way it has all come together. Then what I usually do is go up to Layer and uh, Flatten Image. And when we hit Flatten Image, you'll see that uh, any of those white lines that uh, kind of outline where the images have come together disappear. Now the first step that uh, we do to make this image uh, just one complete beautiful image is to do some cropping. Let's uh, go to the edge there. If you're not already on your crop tool, just point to the crop tool here and then start sliding this back a little bit and we can crop down some of the sky. Now if you find that most of the image is covered with sky but you've got a little bit of blue up in the corner here, it's better to leave that uh, as white space for now because we want to preserve as much of the sky as possible and it looks fine for almost all of the rest of the shot. In fact, we might bring it back just a little bit. And then the same down here. Let's crop this up. But if we see that most of the image is fine up until to a certain point, uh, it's okay to leave a little bit of white space and then just duplicate that corner. Okay, and when you've got something that looks pretty good, hit the Enter key and then using our stamp key over here and making sure our brush is fairly decent size by right clicking on that you can change the size and then by pressing down on the alt key having the the brush in an area that is a very similar in color to the area that we want to cover press down the alt key and with your left mouse button click down and then go over to that area that you want to cover and just paint it in. Might need to go back just a little bit. 
hit that alt key a couple more times so that we're getting very similar uh, color from the rest of the image. And that way you can preserve uh, as much sky as possible. We see we've got a little bit up here in the corner. We might want to reduce the size of our brush a little bit as we get this one. Hit the Alt key, click on it, and just fill it in. And let's open up our brush for this grassy area. And uh, when we're filling something like this, rather than go from the side, we might uh, try coming down so that the grass looks like it's just growing up. And that way we can fudge a little bit and save a little bit more of our image. And then just before you save it, you might want to make some overall adjustments uh, to the image itself. Uh, let's go up to Image, Adjustments, and uh, maybe choose our Curves tool. And then uh, if you know how to work with curves, we can add a little bit more black to the blacks. And uh, maybe up here we'll preserve our brightness. And then in the middle, uh, control the uh, middle aspect. And likewise, you could uh, check out uh, some of the other adjustments that you might want to make to exposure, um, brightness and contrast, vibrance, hue and saturation. It's already pretty saturated, but just so you get an idea how you could uh, add a little bit more saturation to the image before you save it. might want to check out the uh, size of the image. Hit Control alt i altogether, and you'll see that we have an image that is uh, just about 10,000 pixels across with a height of 3,300 pixels, which makes a nice size image if you're wanting to print a high-resolution uh, banner, let's say. Now, if you wanted to show this up on Facebook, of course, you wouldn't necessarily want to upload an image this size. If we look down here, we see that it's almost 100 megs. So what you would want to do is save a copy like this for your main image and then hit Control-Alt-I again and go down and change this to maybe, oh, 1600 or even 1200 for uh, Facebook. Hit OK and then save that image again with a little different name low resolution at the name of your at the end of your name and that way you have something that's easy to upload to facebook or other internet uh, venues and it would still uh, have that nice wide uh, panorama view now the way photoshop works it looks but, uh, here as though it's now a really small image but 1200 is still a decent size if we hit control plus key, we see that it's still holding resolution up to, uh, there, we've lost resolution there. That uh, is showing the full size. And uh, so you can see it's still a, a nice size image at 1200 for internet use or PowerPoint or whatever you like. Okay, so there you get an idea how you can stitch that together and uh, save the corners. Let's maybe do a few more just so you get an idea of the different types of things that you can do with this. Let's go uh, back to Automate and uh, do Photo Merge. And this time, let's pick a set that was shot in a little different way. Rather than shooting horizontal, you might be out in the field with, say, just a 50 millimeter lens. And yet you've got this beautiful expanse in front of you. And as you hold up your camera, the 50 millimeter lens uh, isn't actually going to show you much of your horizon. And uh, so you can turn your camera vertical and uh, take a series of shots and let Photoshop stitch those together. Let's see if we can find one of those here. Yeah, here's one where I've turned the camera. I was out there in the field with just a 50 millimeter lens and too far to go back to change to a wide angle lens. So I turned to the camera. Let's see how we can do to stitch these together. And it's quite a few shots here. Let's be interesting to see what Photoshop does with these. And I might put you on pause while it uh, stitches these together. Okay, and here it is stitched together. Let's um, flatten the image under layer, flatten image. And let's do our crop again. Hit, go over and hit the crop tool. Bring that down. And the bottom. This one I don't think we'll have to do any stamp to. But we will want to kind of work with the image a little bit. 
Uh, let's go to our curves tool under image adjustments curves and the whole image was just a little overexposed so let's take the center point uh, down quite a bit and then hits hits some more blacks and maybe you want to try and bring a little bit more blue back into the uh, sky okay that looks pretty good now I want to try another experiment where I actually I've never tried to stitch one of these together and see if Photoshop can do this I took uh, a series of images that uh, might be considered more of a checkerboard approach where I shot two images up and down and then moved the camera over to the right a little bit took two more images one of the sky and one of the field let's see what Photoshop does with that Go to browse, and this one I call checkerboard. So you can see that the first image is more of the sky, and then the second image is of the field just below that. And then I move the camera over to the right and uh, take another series of two up and down, and then go up to the sky again. Well, it looks like it did manage to stitch those together. And, well, it uh, looks like it did some adjustment to the exposure. You might have briefly saw there that uh, each series of two was exposed a little bit differently, and probably because of the sun. But it managed to, I guess, make some adjustments to the exposure as well to piece all of this together. So that's pretty amazing. Um, let's crop this out. Okay, we still haven't flattened our image. Let's go over to layer and flatten the image. And now we've got one image to work with. Uh, we can now make our adjustments to the whole image using curves is where I like to start. Should have maybe uh, made these adjustments more in Lightroom with the raw image itself. But you, just so you can see, you can still do it at the end. As long as your images are fairly consistent. In exposure looks like uh, Photoshop even compensates for that when you don't have a consistent exposure all right so that's now a fairly decent image now I'd probably want to get rid of these telephone wires again we can use our stamp tool to get rid of those uh, let's go back just a little bit hit the alt key again and just get rid of those now just one last example that I want to show you is uh, it doesn't always have to be a horizontal pan. Let's say you're walking around again with just a fixed lens on your camera, a prime lens, and you come across uh, a tall building or a tall sculpture or something that you want to get a little higher resolution image. Uh, and uh, so you can also do a pan of that. Let's go down to Photo Merge and go after a file or a series of images that I took of a church. Just three shots, but uh, as you look at these, you'll see that I've got the very top of the church, the middle of the church, and then all the way down to the bottom. Let's bring all three in and see what Photoshop does with those. Hit OK. All right, there we have the full image. Let's uh, flatten our image, go to layer, go down to flatten image. There we have one image. Let's go to our crop tool and crop that right up. All right, and so there we have one image made out of three by piecing them together in Photoshop. So there you have it, how to make panoramas from multiple images using photo merge in Photoshop.